We're Kels and Jay. <laughs> and over the last few years, we found a real passion for building. We turned an old school bus into our first home before downsizing and converting a van into our current tiny home on wheels. Recently, we found a passion in helping others with their own builds. This is insane! To get them one step closer to fulfilling dreams of their own. This time we found ourselves right by Lake Michigan, where Julie and her dog Ollie are in need of converting this 23-foot shuttle bus into their new tiny home on wheels. This bus may be tiny, but there's nothing simple about this build. It comes with a few firsts for us, but as you guys know, we're always up for a challenge. We had a slight panic moment. It makes things more interesting, right? Join us today as we completely rebuild the floor, add subfloor, insulation, and get started on some of the most unique features that we can't wait to show you. I'm gonna make it so it's like hidden. As you guys probably know by now, Jay flew by the first few days of this build. So let's catch you up on everything. Julie did the demo herself, revealing there was nothing between the floor and the road of the bus. Jay treated what was left of the floor for rust and removed any extra rails. He added an external plug for shore power, removed excess wires, and framed out the ceiling. The windows had been leaking, so Jay was also sure to seal them up real good. He reused the plastic that originally outlined the windows because it was a good sturdy material, and he'll just trim that out and make it look all pretty later. He primed the metal with Rust-Oleum paint primer before gluing and securing it down as the new floor. Next up was nothing new. He framed out the floor before adding insulation board and the subfloor. How long do I have to stay? Close my eyes when you come away. The owner, Julie, decided to make a sacrifice and downsize her bed to a twin to allow for maximum space for other things in such a small build. So Jay framed that out and started on the electrical, then added the diesel heater. And I think that just about catches you guys up on the last three days. Good morning, you guys from Michigan. Can you tell I'm excited to be here? We are parked on a beautiful lake about 20 minutes east of Lake Michigan. So this area is beautiful, especially in the summer. It's the best time to be here. Can you tell we're getting more east because the more east we get, the frizzier and puffier my hair gets. Wow, it looks so short. So today we're helping out Julie. She is a solo female traveler and she used to travel the US in her travel trailer. She sold that so that she could have a bus customized to her likings. I've been talked to by editing, trying to catch up on all the things from our latest build. Jay has been busy at work. The shuttle bus is about the same length as our van. It is wider and it is shorter. So it's a very small build. Julie wants a lot of things packed in there. And yeah, we're trying to make it all work. It's more of like a puzzle, so it's kind of fun. And yeah, this, this build has a lot of unique features to it. I'll kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. So the first sort of weird thing about this build is there was like a fire extinguisher so that if the engine like catches on fire, there's like a button you can press and it just like lets the fire out. I think this was a government vehicle, which makes sense as to why it has it, I guess, but just something that Jay and I have never seen before. So Julie has a friend. I think that's going to take that out because we don't want to mess with that. Second weird thing, so Julie did the demo herself, and when she did the demo, the floor came up. So like there was nothing between the metal and the ground, like you could just see through it. So Jay had to put on, what kind of metal did you put on? Just galvanized steel and then treated it for rust. So Jay had to put on galvanized, 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 why can't I say that? Galvanized? Galvanized. Galvan Galva. Galva. Galvanized steel so that we have a nice sturdy base to work with here. And then right now, Jay, and I'm about to join him, is taping off everything so that when we do the spray foam, you can just easily peel it away and it's not all over everything. With spray foam, the most important thing is the preparation. Make sure to tape off and block out every single surface you don't want spray foam on because once it's on there, it's really tough to get off. Also, in case you were wondering, one spray foam kit was not big enough for this 23-foot shuttle bus. So we had a slight panic moment, well Jay did, because he ordered one of the foam at greens. Turns out we needed two. Yes. 
<laughs> but Julia was super cool about it. We didn't realize that like we were gonna be blocking off these windows, that whole back area. So yeah, we just had to go to Home Depot and get another one. No big deal. Now for the satisfying part. Woo! As we cleaned up and prepared for what was next, I think being in northern Michigan was starting to have an effect on Jay. I'm used to this country music, huh? You like the country music? So I was playing with the goopy goop, the gaps and cracks stuff that you like fill the cracks with. And it's really fun to play with when it's wet, but now that it's dry, my fingers are like Wah. It's still kind of fun to pick off. I don't know if you guys ever did this when you were in school, but you put Elmer's glue on your fingers and you let it dry and then you peel it off. I don't know if I'm just a sicko, but I thoroughly enjoyed that. Or wax on a candle. It's a good one. Yeah, me, I can't get much weirder. Jay got to planning the first wall. So yeah, I gotta make a wall. Something that was extremely important because everything would be built off of that. I think I'm gonna make the wall first, scribe where it sits on this wall, and I can screw a block to here. Handy dandy curve tool. Coming in clutch again, getting the pair of his back ceiling. That thing's pretty cool. We finished up framing the bus, then called it a day. Surprise! How did you get up there? What are you doing? You're such a weirdo. You're such a weirdo. You're so weird. I love you. Thank you. The next day, Jay started with electrical. As someone who'd only be off grid 50% of the time, Julie went for 300 amp hour batteries, 375 watts of solar, and a 2,000 watt inverter. Alright, so now we're gonna lay the ceiling panels and compared to the last build that was a 40 foot bus that had, I think it was like 10 sheets of plywood on the ceiling, this one's gonna work out to be just under three sheets all in. So, complete game changer. So it should go pretty fast. So check out Jay's new pants. I got <laughs> pockets for everything. I got a phone pocket. I got a nail pocket for all my nails. I got pockets for pencils. I got carabiners to hook stuff on. Oh, so many. Oh, best part about these trousers. I got knee pads. So I can just fall to the ground. It's like playing basketball all over again. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's hard like doing a build and living in a van. You have to wear the same outfit every day. So I think you earned, you earned new pants. material that we're using for the ceiling and the walls is what's it called again? It's just like hardboard. Cardboard. Hardboard. <laughs> oh hardboard. So it's a little bit cheaper than plywood. We've never really worked with it before. Julie wanted to have like a higher quality affordable build. Obviously almost everyone does but yeah we thought this would be a great way to save a ton of money. The only thing that makes it a little bit more work is Jay has to pre-drill all the holes before screwing them in so that they sink in. But yeah, should work okay. We're gonna sand it real good before painting it and see how it goes. Coming together. So in this area, do you want to tell them about the door, Jay? 
So the door, I mean, there's just gonna be a normal door that you open this way, right? But I'm gonna make it so it's like hidden. So there's no essence of it being a door, like when you look at it. So the door itself is gonna open this way, but once closed, you won't notice that. And it will tie into the ceiling and the headboard. Right now it's all ugly and brown. <laughs> Once this is all painted white, everything's primed, painted, sanded, trimmed out. It's gonna look nice. All right, back to the floor. So we went with Home Depot. Oh, Lowe's then. actually. Oh, Lowe's. Lowe's this time. Not the best. No? But they're not the worst. Could you put like soft clothes in them? Yeah, that's uh, Yeah, you can, change, you can change the hinges. That might be worth it. Oh, you're going to do your shimmy to make it even from top to bottom. Steve and I've learned things from editing and filming Jay. Once you got done making the cabinets even on top and bottom, Jay started on the butcher block countertop. It's sort of fun how, no matter how small a space these builds are, there's endless possibilities for what you can do and what people prioritize. A huge kitchen wasn't a top priority for Julie like it was in the owners of the previous build we did. A four foot countertop with a pop out table was more than sufficient enough for Julie. Things do seem to be going smoothly so far, but this build is still far from over. Uh-oh, we got a little bit of a problem. Hey, Julie, what? grab me a really big towel, quickly. Okay, here. Man. Oh. 